Today's video is sponsored by Tenorshare's Reiboot. A Reiboot can help you enter and exit recovery mode on your iPhone absolutely free. It can also help you troubleshoot over 150 issues on your iOS device. But best of all, if you've updated to iOS 16 and having issues, it can also help you downgrade from iOS 16 back to iOS 15 with just a few simple clicks. So check out Tenorshare's Reiboot. Links will be in the description down below. Okay, so we've had iOS 16 developer beta one for about five Five days now as of the filming of this video and I wanted to come back and share with you guys additional new features and changes that I've come across after using iOS 16 developer beta 1 for about a week now now there's a lot happening here there's a lot to talk about so let's just dive right into this one now as always if you would like to stay up to date with the latest iOS news and Apple software updates don't forget to subscribe and of course turn on those notifications so that you don't miss another episode now the first category i want to talk about is within the cell data options so if we go to cell data options here and we set up an eSIM option here if we go to the bottom you now have the ability under other options to transfer an eSIM using bluetooth and now with ios 15 or earlier you can do this via qr code which was a little bit more complicated in this case it's a lot easier if you have another iphone that you want to transfer an eSIM from and to all you need is both devices to be unlocked Bluetooth must be enabled and iOS 16 must be running on both devices, iOS 16 or higher. And you go under Bluetooth options and this will automatically transfer the eSIM over to another iPhone. Super useful feature. I like this option that Apple has added into the cell setup options for eSIM on the iPhone. Now there's also some changes within reminders. Apple continues to update the reminders application. You now have pin your favorites, create templates, and there's a lot more happening within the reminders application now not everything is available as of yet this is beta one but once everything is available i'll do an entire rundown of the reminders application but here's a quick list of everything that's new within the reminders including this new splash screen that you're looking at here when you open the reminders application now i also have another iphone that i do testing on this is the iphone 13 pro and i've noticed one thing here because this iphone does not have any service it's only for beta testing and if you take a look here under the control center option there's no service but it does says there SOS only so this means that this iPhone is capable of course to calling emergency services without having to have a cell data plan now when I first saw this here on the status bar of iPhone it really reminded me of a feature that it was rumored to be coming to iPhone 13 but it didn't and that is the ability to make a phone call using satellite service or send a message using satellite service so could this be a hint that Apple is working on this feature to finally be rolling out with the next generation of iPhone or it's just something that Apple has added to the software let me know what you think about this one but yes yeah, something that's new when you don't have a service your iPhone tells you yes you can still make a phone call using SOS or emergency services directly within your iPhone so something new of course within iOS 16 and now I also want to shift my attention over to screen time quickly here because under screen time options everything is different now when you go to set up screen time the UI is different everything the setup even the splash screen here with additional information and things you can do so we turn on screen time here you have now this right here where you can go ahead and select the age restrictions you also have your all your categories here and you can scroll down here and go really deep into the screen time settings here you can enable these restrictions you can also do the communication safety directly within this prompt right here so yeah screen time did receive nice updates here across the board so if you have children in your house screen time is now more detailed and I'm pretty sure a lot of parents will be happy with a lot of the changes happening there as well now i want to shift my attention over into the lock screen as we know ios 16 biggest update in my opinion and most do agree the lock screen has been one of the biggest changes now there's also additional things you can do within the lock screen when you go into customization mode for example if you have let's say the battery percentage right there on your widget you can actually tap into here once but if you tap it twice you have the option to turn off automatic and you can choose which device battery is displayed on that widget widget you can also do some search there as well same thing applies for things like the weather so you can tap the weather select a random location your current location and it will display that information directly within the widget right there on the lock screen I know a lot of you guys were asking about this one that's how you do it it's a new feature of course 
in iOS 16. Now, last but not least, I want to talk about setting up an iPhone on the latest OS. So with iOS 15, you can set up another iPhone or another family member's iPhone, but you would have to do everything on that iPhone that you were setting up. Now you can actually use your own personal iPhone to set up a miners right a miners account so if you have a family account you can set up another iPhone using your very own iPhone you don't have to mess with the other device you can do everything right there on your device so once you start the new iPhone and I tested this with my test device here I reset this one I set a child account on it and it prompted me on my iPhone to actually set this device up without even having to touch it or screen time settings parental guides and everything like that can be set up directly within the parents iPhone as you can see see right here and this is what the platter or UI looks like when you go to set up a brand new iPhone for a family member that's a minor and there you guys have it I just wanted to share the few changes that I've come across after using the software I'm sure there's a lot more to share here as Apple continues to release new betas we'll see additional features and changes come across and now when can we expect the next beta for iOS 16 now this information that I'm going to share with you guys is based on previous experience so iOS 14 beta uh, release dates iOS 15 beta release dates so we got the first beta on June 6 so iOS 16 beta 1 was released on June 6 so if history is any indication Apple continues with their uh, schedule patterns as previous years right release for betas we should see beta 2 on the week of the 27th of June. A week after that, we'll most likely see the public beta be available as well. So iOS 16 developer beta 2 should be available on the week of the 27th of June. So stay tuned for that as I learn more. Of course, I'll be updating you guys. This has been a more new features and changes within iOS 16. Let me know what you think about the software so far if you're using it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.